Welcome to Dr. Ben's Micronutrients. Let's talk about magnesium. Magnesium is the fourth most common mineral in the human body after calcium, sodium and potassium. It is also the second most common intracellular cation after potassium and this is seriously very very important. If magnesium is so important, how much of it do we have in our body? Within the frame of a 70 kg individual, there is an average of 25 grams of magnesium in reserve with 53% in the bone, 27% in muscle, 19% in soft tissues and less than 1% in serum or in blood. So this is very important because a lot of times we look at blood levels of magnesium. Magnesium is involved in over 300 enzyme systems in our body that are necessary for protein synthesis, muscle contraction, nerve function, blood glucose control, hormone receptor binding, blood pressure regulation, cardiac excitability, transmembrane ion flux, that is movement of ions around across membranes, gating of calcium channels. As well, magnesium is involved in energy production. We need energy. We cannot survive without energy. So uh, magnesium is crucial in something called as ATP metabolism. ATP is the energy currency of the body. So it takes part in something called as oxidative phosphorylation where ATP is formed in the mitochondria in the electron transport chain. It also participates in glycolysis that is breaking down of glucose. Magnesium is also involved in our nucleic acid synthesis, the synthesis of RNA and DNA. So you can only imagine or understand how important magnesium is. So let's look into the clinical manifestations of uh, you know, low magnesium or magnesium deficiency in our body. Magnesium and cardiovascular health. We know that low magnesium contributes to vascular calcification, accumulation of connective tissue in the vessel walls, altered lipid exchange between the vessel walls and blood, increased triglycerides, that is fat, and accumulation of oxalate in vessel walls. So all these contribute to the lowering of elasticity of the vessel walls and this can cause a big problem with uh, the cardiovascular health and ultimately cause challenges for us. Magnesium and metabolic syndrome, diabetes and prevention of diabetic complications. We know that people who have lower levels of uh, magnesium when compared to normal people have metabolic challenges. So a uh, diet rich in magnesium is important in preventing metabolic challenges. Here is an illustration to drive in the point about magnesium deficiency and metabolic challenges. Magnesium deficiency impairs insulin signaling. It increases inflammation. It also alters the microbiota in, in our gut. And all of these lead to obesity, metabolic syndrome and diabetes. Magnesium and muscle cramps. A recent scientific review analyzed the use of magnesium supplementation for muscle cramps. The results demonstrated a trend towards benefit. So it kind of makes sense to have magnesium before any activity, before any sport before any exercise routine. Migraine and headaches. A Cochrane review, a very reputed uh, institution, grades magnesium as one of the strongly recommended treatments for migraine headaches. Oral magnesium supplementation has been shown to reduce the frequency, 
duration and intensity of migraines by 41% when compared to placebo which stands at 15.8%. In depression, magnesium is required as a coenzyme to convert tryptophan, an amino acid, to serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter and it is recognized as a major determinant of mental health and mood. Magnesium insufficiency is related to severe bronchospasm in some vulnerable individuals. Bronchospasm or a narrowing of the airways is a typical manifestation of asthma. So it certainly makes sense for individuals who have low levels of magnesium to replenish those levels. Magnesium is required for the conversion of vitamin D into its active form. The active form of vitamin D in turn supports calcium absorption and metabolism as well as normal parathyroid hormone function. So getting calcium right, getting the parathyroid hormone functions right is very central to the health of bone. So this helps in most of the bone challenges including osteoporosis. One of the big challenges that we have today or one of the challenges of modern day life is sleep. Sleep has become a central problem with most of us living in cities especially. So magnesium has a relaxing and it facilitates sleep. It's also been associated with significant improvement in the insomnia severity index or insomnia severity index basically measures how bad your sleeplessness is. It improves sleep time, sleep efficiency, sleep onset latency, serum cortisol concentration, serum renin and even serum melatonin. Pregnancy is a physiological state. It's not a pathological state, right? And we know that people are deficient uh, or have hypomagnesemia. So magnesium deficiency is common in pregnancy. And evidence suggests that magnesium deficiency is a determinant of pregnancy outcomes as well as long-term health of the offspring. The skin is our largest protective barrier. And skin conditions or skin challenges are very common. Magnesium salts are known to enhance skin hydration, that is the water content of skin. It, so it also helps with dermal permeability, it helps with barrier repair and helps in facilitating dermal proliferation or epidermal proliferation and differentiation and all these helps in reducing inflammatory conditions of the skin. What about magnesium and cancer? A reduction or a decrease in magnesium intake reduces intracellular magnesium naturally. And this reduction reduces magnesium ATP which in turn increases cell proliferation by activating calcium channels which can provide the milieu or the environment for the development of cancer. We have looked into the clinical manifestations of hypomagnesemia or magnesium deficiency. But what do scientists who work on magnesium throughout their lives say about magnesium deficiency and hypomagnesemia? They say that subclinical magnesium deficiency is a common and under-recognized problem throughout the world and abnormalities of serum Magnesium may be the most underdiagnosed serum electrolyte abnormality in clinical practice today. The incidence of hypomagnesemia or magnesium deficiency appears to range from 12.5% to 20% on routine laboratory tests. So this widespread magnesium intake challenges just didn't pop up out of nowhere. They all relate to our lifestyles and our food intake. So we know that there are diminished levels of magnesium in many processed foods and processed foods form a very important part of many people's lives. 
cooking and boiling as well uh, result in the re reduction or decline of food magnesium content. The challenges with gastrointestinal absorption of magnesium and that also precipitates naturally vitamin D deficiency which precipitates uh, bone challenges. So we also see the uh, chelation that happens with many of the pesticides that are sprayed on, on plants and, and crops. As well, there's excess excretion of magnesium when it comes to uh, alcohol usage and uh, the presence of diseases like type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Some of the fertilizers that we use for our crops and plants may not actually have as much uh, minerals including magnesium in them. Now our cultural, agricultural practices rather, techniques rather, have become monoculture which means that the, there is no recycling of, of crops which provide minerals for the next crop. Now magnesium is also reduced when we age as much as 30 percent. Just to drive in this point, the chronic magnesium imbalance caused by all the challenges that have been you know, tabulated on the left side of this diagram, which include reduced intake, reduced absorption, the gastrointestinal loss of magnesium, the increased renal loss or uh, increased uh, excretion of magnesium in urine, excessive sweating, excessive monocultural agricultural techniques, increased requirements in states like pregnancy or stress, or increasing soil depletion of magnesium all lead to magnesium deficiency or hypomagnesemia, which lead to low levels of magnesium in the cell, that is intracellular magnesium, as well as low levels of magnesium in the bone. Here is a table with the recommended daily allowance or RDA for magnesium. This is all in milligrams and the requirement for magnesium change or changes with age. It also changes in physiological conditions like pregnancy and lactation. What about the natural sources of magnesium? The natural sources of magnesium include cocoa, mackerel, spinach, Swiss chard, edamame, avocados, sunflower seeds, almonds, peanuts, and cashew nuts to name a few. After looking into the natural sources of magnesium, here is a table that shows the various magnesium formulations that are available as supplements. This table has a list of nine different salts of magnesium that are available as magnesium oxide, magnesium carbonate, hydroxide, citrate, lactate, chloride, aspartate, sulfate and gluconate. Now there are many more uh, salts of magnesium like magnesium L-threonate and magnesium uh, glycinate. Now it's very important to look at the um, availability of magnesium in these different salts. For example, magnesium oxide, 60% of the formulation has the um, what you call as elemental magnesium that is available from that salt. It's also important to look at how much of the magnesium salt is available to the body or bioavailable. So some of the salts like magnesium citrate is, is, has good bioavailability and so does magnesium lactate. One of the inherent challenges with magnesium is its, uh, its capacity to cause diarrhea if taken in large quantities. So it may be very important to look at the type of magnesium, the salt of magnesium and how it suits you. For some people, magnesium oxide and magnesium uh, citrate may be a good combination. For some others, it could be magnesium citrate and magnesium sulfate, magnesium uh, 
aspartate. Magnesium sulfate is usually not given in oral formulations. It can certainly cause uh, loose motions. So looking at the various salts of magnesium, it is important to choose the right type of magnesium salt that you can take in order to replenish the low levels of magnesium in your body. So let's end this video clip by reiterating the point that magnesium is the fourth most common mineral in the human body after calcium, sodium and potassium. Magnesium is epic.